Hi everyone, my name's Steve and hopefully in this video I'll be answering some of the questions you might have about what it's like to actually leave school and start into the world of work. Now I took an apprenticeship, so let's talk about that. When I left school, I managed to obtain some qualifications that were the minimum requirements needed to land a mechanical and production engineering apprenticeship with a local employer. This employer, around five miles from my home, employed around 2,000 people and at any one time there were 100 apprentices on the ground and that was roughly 20 apprentices for each of the five years of that apprenticeship. During my apprenticeship, I spent the first year full time at college. Now, college was an experience where I was mixing with other people of my own age who had come from different employers because this college was doing a first year, very broad based training in engineering. So in other words, how to use simple engineering tools and some engineering machinery, such as lathes, and millers and drilling machines. And during this, we managed to pass some basic engineering qualifications, but that was just our first year full time. Perhaps the biggest shock to us was the fact that we were treat like young adults. We were generally called by our surnames and we were expected to turn up to every lesson during the day. And that was generally from nine o'clock in the morning till five o'clock in the afternoon. Now also part of that first year involved night school. Now that's something you have to consider because part of our qualifications meant that we had to attend uh, college from seven o'clock till nine o'clock on an evening. So think about trying to do maths at a higher level than GCSEs at uh, between seven o'clock and nine o'clock. It's just something to think about. During the next four years of my apprenticeship, these were spent moving around the many different departments of the company. We spent a lot of time with different people in different departments who were generally going about their everyday job, but spending extra time, care and attention in order to, to train us. We were learning from people who were trained themselves to do a job. Some were using expensive pieces of equipment we were expected to learn and be able to operate that equipment just as well as they could. Many others were simply going about their, their lives, planning, doing drawings, making decisions, and we were involved in it. We were also treated very much like the same as any other employee. We were expected to turn up every day, clock in and out, or sign in and out. We were allowed a number of holidays a year, I think about 25 plus some bank holidays. That was it. There was no deciding, oh, I won't go today. You had to go today. That's, that's the way it worked. We got paid for being there. The reasons I chose an apprenticeship was the fact it suited me. That was quite simple and my decision to make. I took lots of advice from different people. Now, my dad had been an engineer and my granddad had been an engineer and both of those people had served apprenticeships and it had done them good. They'd always worked as engineers. So my thinking was that I could also undertake an apprenticeship. It was a great way of learning and at the same time we were being paid. So to earn as you learn was a great way of motivating you to, to learn and understand and develop a career. We were also expected to take exams at college. So for one day a week, we were sent to college to learn in depth some subjects such as physics and science and further aspects of engineering. We were examined along the way and the support we had was from our training department. Some companies have training officers if they have a large amount of apprentices. Others may have a, uh, an HR department, a human resources department, who were checking on their apprentices to make sure they were on track, make sure they were attending college when they said, and generally looking after their, 
health, safety and well-being. Apprentices are generally very well looked after. We don't have much experience when we first start into any company, so they take extra special care in making sure that we're safe. There's always good risk assessments done to make sure we're not putting any extreme forms of danger. And there are certain items of equipment we're not allowed to use until we reach a certain age. One of the great things you'll notice if you do go into an apprenticeship is that you're, you're treat very much like a young adult. You're not, you're not children anymore, you're now working and expected to work and earn your living. So my advice to you, if you're thinking about an apprenticeship, think about what it means. You're an employee, you're going to work to earn money and learn the skills and techniques that you require for a lifetime of work. Now I valued my apprenticeship very much. It gave me a higher national certificate qualification and that's just one of the many qualifications available as an apprenticeship. Some offer NVQs, national vocational qualifications, up to quite a high level. There are other apprenticeships which also offer a degree. That's a degree apprenticeship. And there are companies offering these. So think about what's right for you. There are apprenticeships, of course, which we've just talked about, but you may decide you want to go on to sixth form and study A-levels and then on to university and do a degree. But think about longer term. What is it that you're looking to do? What do you think you would love to do? Now, when you find a job that you actually love, it's really not like working. It's more like a hobby that you get paid for. So think about what you enjoy or what you might enjoy and explore what's available to you. Whatever you do, good luck in your future.